How's it going, guys? So we have a medium difficulty question for renal slash internal medicine. This is not going to be a lengthy clip. It's very factoidy. I'll tell you exactly what you need to know, not waste your fucking time, all right? So before we get started, please subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. Give the video a like. I really appreciate it. Find me on Instagram at melman underscore medical, M-E-H-L-M-A-N underscore medical. Link is down below. Find me on Telegram. Recently created a Telegram group and channel. Links are down below. Now let's start the fucking clip. So 88-year-old woman with Alzheimer's disease, she's had a two-day history of fever and chills, febrile at 102 Fahrenheit. She has left costovertebral angle tenderness, serum white blood cells, 15,000 per microliter, normal range 4 to 11,000 per microliter. She's one plus urine RBCs and white blood cells, few bacteria in the urine, many granular casts. Question just wants to know the most likely diagnosis. So let's just walk through the answer choices here. Choice say interstitial nephritis, aka tubular interstitial nephritis or, or interstitial interstitial nephropathy, wrong fucking answer. So this is going to be pretty much always an NSAID, beta lactam or cephalosporin that causes white blood cells in the urine, copious white blood cells, which are eosinophils. And there can be a rash in about 50% of patients. They might say, uh, dude's being treated for endocarditis. He's been on nafcillin for the past six weeks, and he's got a rash with white blood cells in the urine. That's just interstitial nephritis. Okay, very simple diagnosis. Choice B, membranous glomerulonephritis, aka membranous glomerulonephropathy. Wrong fucking answer. Uh, this has a myriad of etiologies in terms of drugs, dapsone, gold salts, uh, sulfa agents. Uh, it can be primary due to phospholipase A2 receptor mutations. Uh, it can be due to uh, hepatitis B, okay, uh, rheumatoid arthritis, so uh, solid tumors, kidney, breast, pancreatic, so a myriad of etiologies, as I just fucking said. Uh, light microscopy will show inflamed glomerulus, uh, just looks very uh, coiled and red in appearance, and electron microscopy shows a spike and dome appearance of uh, complement and IgG deposition. Wrong fucking answer. Choice C, proliferative glomerulonephritis is actually, and this isn't, it's wrong answer, but this is an interesting answer choice because this is the NBME for step one, their new way of saying just post-streptococcal glomerulonephritis, okay? So you'll get your very standard textbook PSGN question where they say like, you know, a kid has a sore throat and then two weeks later has red urine and you're like, oh, it's just PSGN. But then the answer to answer is proliferative glomerulonephritis. OK, they can say a kid has yellow crusties and petigo for seven days. Uh, so it can be uh, skin infections as well due to streptogenes causing proliferative glomerulonephritis, uh, a.k.a. post-streptococcal glomerulonephritis. And the reason it's confusing is because we have membranoproliferative glomerulonephritis, which I just made a, uh, the last YouTube clip on, uh, which is due to hepatitis C usually. And you can have diffuse proliferative glomerulonephritis, which is uh, lupus. Um, so confusing sounding answer choice. Rapidly progressive glomerulonephritis, which would be Wegener granulomatosis, aka granulomatosis with polyangiitis or good pasture syndrome, as well as microscopic polyangiitis. Wrong fucking answer, as I just said. Choice D, pyelonephritis is the correct answer. Now look, this is where, this is very factoidy, this question. We've got granular casts, okay? OMG, holy shit. And you're going to say, well, I thought muddy brown granular casts, muddy brown uh, or dirty brown granular casts, that these are pathognomonic and buzzy for acute tubular necrosis, okay? It's fucking stupid. It's not my opinion, all right? It's on the NBME material for 2CK. You need to know there's something called general granular casts, okay? I'm not joking. That can be seen in various conditions, such as pyelonephritis, just dehydration. They can just say granular casts, okay? And uh, and they will give you costovertebral angle tenderness. I mean, this is pathognomonic for pyelonephritis. And students just get, get pulled into the notion that this has to be acute tubular necrosis, okay? I mean, as I said, it's very factoidy. It's very stupid. It's not my opinion. Uh, but this is pyelonephritis. You're going to treat with ceftriaxone or ciprofloxacin. Tubular necrosis, yeah. I mean, this can be due to a myriad of causes. Uh, ischemia, acute ischemia being the highest yield one where there's blood loss due to surgery um, or uh, an episode of ventricular fibrillation where there's acute uh, decreased perfusion in the kidney. Uh, that's really, really high yield for acute tubular necrosis. Okay, of course, rhabdomyolysis, myoglobin is nephrotoxic and cause acute tubular necrosis. Drugs such as gentamicin, aminoglycoside, IV contrast. So there's a myriad of etiologies for acute tubular necrosis, but dirty brown granular casts, muddy brown granular casts. Uh, whereas 
in pilo dehydration, you can get quote unquote just general granular casts. All right, that's your factoid. You know the deal. I'm gonna continue making more content. If you like my stuff, subscribe to my channel, and I appreciate your time. That's it.